This video is part of the lecture for multivariable calculus and I'm going to talk about functions of two variables. But let me go over what we did so far. We talked about vectors and we said that basically a vector is a quantity, for example the vector a, b, c is a quantity with length and direction. So two characters are very important in vectors. Then we talked about vector functions and we said that vector functions uh, it would be exactly um, like a vector with components but each of the components would be a function for example x of t y of t and then z of t and we use them to describe curves in two or three dimensional vector spaces in two or three dimensional spaces and um, so a vector function in that case we show them by r of t and it takes the parameter t and it map it to x, t, y, t, and then z, t. And um, the domain of this function would be a subset of r, it's just because we have just one parameter in vector function. And then the range would be a set of vectors. Okay? Now, we want to study functions of several variables and we use functions of two variables specifically. So function of two variables. It could be something like this. It could be z equals to f of x and y. So we have just two parameters x and y in here and we use this function to describe to describe surfaces in three dimensional spaces. So they they like some three-dimensional object, okay? So um, a function of two variable is basically a function, something like this, z equals to x squared plus y squared. It's a function, it's not a vector, okay? So now you see the difference between a vector function that we studied already and a function of two variables that we are going to study now. Okay, um, but let's go back to calculus and see what function is basically. So a function is a rule which assigns which assigns to each point to each point in the domain. value in the range. So basically we have a set that we call it domain and we have a set that it's called range. And if I want to graph it, so we have a domain which would be the set of all the points that we can put into our function. Then we have a function f and after that, we get some values that they're going to be on the range. Okay, so in calculus, for one variable calculus, if we have just one variable, we have a function of one variable, something like this, f of x equals to cosine of x. Okay, and then we have like this shape, x-axis, y-axis, and cosine of x, like this. 
the domain is the set of all the points that we can put in the function and as you see for the function cosine of x the domain would be all the numbers in real line i can put every number in here basically the shadow of the graph would be the domain i can put anything on that and the range would be for for example for the cosine it would be from negative one to one all the values that we can get after you put the numbers in the function but when we have two variables okay we we have something like this the value of f the value of f depends on on two parameters x and y meters x and y and we get a number and we get a number f of x and y so basically we have f of x and y equals to x squared plus y squared it's a function of two variables Okay, we use f of x and y equals to um, a function to, for example, in the physical um, application, we can use it to altitude above the sea level at x and y. Or we can say that f of x and y, if we have just, for example, one more variable, f of x and y and z, can be, for example, temperature at the point x, y, and z on the Earth, okay? Or temperature at, uh, if we have, for example, four variables, f of x, y, z, and then t, it could be, for example, temperature at the point x, y, and z on the Earth at the time t, okay? But uh, we focus on um, just two variable functions. It's just because they're easier to visualize and we can present all their features, okay? So from now on, we study more um, a function of just two variables, not more than that. And I'm gonna define, so we have z equals to f of x and y, then we can talk about the domain and the range of that. So the domain is the set, the set of all points x and y that we are allowed, we are allowed to put in. And since we just have two parameters, the domain that we show it by D is a subset of R2, okay? Then we have a range, and the range is the set of all values that F takes on. takes on. If I want to um, use a notation for that, I'm going to use R, and I'm going to say that R is all the f of x and y such that x and y is in the domain of the function. Now, let me graph it. So, we have x-axis, I have y-axis, and then I have z-axis. Let me move this one a little down. Okay. And then I have the points in here, x, y, and since they are in the x, y plane, the z coordinate would be zero. This would be the domain. Any point on the domain, if I put it into the function, I get a height for that. Okay, I get to this point, which is x and y, and f of x and y, basically z equals to f of x and y. z equals to f of x and y. And 
um, the set of all these values, they are called the range of this function. Okay, let me give you one example. So assume that our function is given by this, f of x and y equals square root of x. Since this is a square root of x, we need x to be greater than 0. So we cannot put x negative on that. So the domain of this function would be all the x and y in R2, all the points in R2, such that x is positive. Right? So if I want to graph the domain here, just the domain, um, it would be all the x's that are greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0. So it can, we can include the y-axis as well, y and x. And um, one more example. If I have f of x and y equals to 1 over x plus y, then what we need for this function, for the domain, we need x plus y not to be equal to 0. And that's why the domain of this function would be the set of all the points. But I'm going to subtract the points x and y such that y is equal to negative x. Okay, now if I want to graph the domain of this function, x and y axis, for the domain, I can put all the numbers on R2, but I'm going to subtract the ones that are in the line y equals to negative x. And this is all about the domain to graph the range Actually, uh, let me give you the range in here. For example, for this function, the range for the first example range would be all the real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. Um, since I have a square root, the values that I get would be greater than or equal to zero. But for this function, the range of that would be the set of all the real numbers, but except the zero. Um, it's 1 over, it's a fraction that is 1 over a number, that's why I don't get 0. And um, to study about how to graph the range, we need to go to the next video.